was Kentucky's fourth loss to a double-digit seed in the NCAA tournament in program history. Two of those losses have now come in the last three seasons. The Cats came into this game, as I mentioned earlier, 13 and a half point favorites according to ESPN Bet. Collectively, the Commonwealth is not well tonight. Let's dig into this more with our Sean Farnham, ESPN college basketball analyst, who joins us tonight. Michael just went through a litany of numbers, holistically, just macro, not tonight, the last few NCAA tournaments. What is the problem with Kentucky? Uh, well, I think, you know, you look at this day and age of college basketball, and over the course of the one-and-done era, there's only been two national champions uh, that have been uh, one, based, largely based on one-and-done players. That was the 2012 uh, Kentucky Wildcats, the 2015 Duke Blue Devils. Um, this team was a young team, and is in a one-game event like the NCAA tournament, uh, when Dillingham doesn't hit as many shots as he normally does, as Reed Shepard gets off to a slow start, only hits that late three-point shot, and struggles under these bright lights, uh, this is the result that can come about it. And for John Calipari and, and the Kentucky Wildcats program, you know, Michael Leaves would tell you this, they're, they're not judged just solely based on how many draft picks they have. Uh, they're judged on the banners in which they hang. And the banners that they want to hang are national championship banners. And when you're two and seven in your last seven years of uh, making the NCAA tournament, uh, that is a disappointment for B B Big Blue Nation. No question about it. Michael is a Kentucky alum. For those that are wondering, we should also mention here next year, when they start next year, you want to talk about the burden on Kentucky? Next year will be the 10th anniversary of their last Final Four appearance. And that's what they're defined by. On the other side, how did the Golden Grizzlies look so golden? You do, you do uncharacteristic things. I mean, it, Golke was unbelievable. And... You look at those highlights. It wasn't like it was necessarily poor defense, by the way. He's hitting a lot of off-balance threes. It's the second time uh, that he's hit 10 or more three-pointers in a game this season. He did it against IUPUI uh, back in February as well. Uh, but it wasn't just him. I mean, in some of those big moments when Kentucky was coming back and Reeves hit the three and Dillingham hit the late three and made it a one-possession game, this team never, never blinked a die. Uh, it executed. It got the ball late in the clock when they couldn't get the ball to goal key. They got it to Townsend on the block. He hit a tough uh, turnaround jump shot from the mid-range, and then Cole hits the dagger three in the corner to make it a two-possession game. Uh, this was about Oakland executing, and they out-executed tonight, and they took body blow after body blow in the second half. Plenty of times where you're sitting here and going, well, here comes the Cats. They're going to take over the game now, and they were unable to do it. And yeah, goal key's the story in his first NCAA tournament game. I mean, this young man was a Division II basketball player at Hillsdale College. Uh, and in his first NCAA tournament game, he hits 10 threes. That's the stuff that memories for a lifetime are made of. He's a legend now on campus. And now they've got to try to refocus themselves because guess what? They got another game. No question about it. Another legend, a legend in the making, the guy that already was their head coach, Greg Campy, who's been at the school for 40 years.